Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start in just a minute. Looks like we have a bunch of you here. I'm excited about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get everybody in our room and out of the waiting room. And if everyone could mute, that would be amazing. Yeah, we have a lot of you guys jumping on, so I'm super excited to see you. Everyone is going to be muted at the beginning. Show my face here for a second at least. So good evening. Welcome to Money Mondays. Always a pleasure to be with you guys. We're doing these almost every Monday in 2022. We have a stacked schedule of requests, things you guys want to work on. And tonight, though, is something that I've been struggling with myself, which is how to be most effective with you individually when we coach. Uh, we've been working on the business plan since, since September of this year, and uh, or I should say of 2021. And some of you guys have had explosive growth in the past year, and we've set a bunch of records as an office. You're going to see over the coming days all the different things that Amanda and I have for you in the graphics department in terms of the people that have doubled, tripled their volume, hit 100,000 GCI and capped out as a first year agent or as a second year agent, just huge amounts of growth. But what we are struggling with, what we're here tonight is to figure out how can we better push you in the right direction and track the receipts. So I've called this or nicknamed this the year of receipts because we are really going to figure out what we each individually, myself included, are doing right and what we need to do more of. So for example, I've been tracking for two years now, actually three years through Calendly, how many uh, interviews I have a week and how many coaching sessions I have a week, because that's really where I should be most focused, particularly now after this past year coming off what was my best year ever. I'm more focused on coaching you as individual agents and in small groups and as an office and throwing some amazing events for our clients, getting us more giveaways like the Peloton app that we did uh, for the newsletter this month. And here's what I've come up with. Let me share my screen here. This is one of two documents we're going to be working in tonight. So you may be remembering the uh, four by four leads, which is uh, the walking you through the different ways we can get leads, the different ways we can be accountable. This is the business tracking document. And this is what I'm going to ask every single one of you to do to begin working more closely with me in a coaching relationship. We need to figure out where exactly you are going and what you are doing. Now you have the weekly greatness tracker from core that is in the coaching blog. You can fill that out every week, but that sometimes doesn't tell me overall what's going on in your business. And where I'm particularly struggling is I could go in and look at each one of your individual CRMs. You own your contacts, exit does not but I provide a CRM for you so that we can make sure that you're getting as much communication out to each individual client as possible. So right up there in the top quadrant, you again, those of you guys that have been here a while, we do have some people that are brand new to Exit or not even at Exit yet tonight uh, on, so welcome to our guests. But you'll see right there in the top quadrant, the contacts. We are gonna start with that because as I coach you, sometimes we'll be talking about some big ticket items, and all of a sudden we get into who's in your CRM and I realize you've got 50 people in there and that is just not gonna cut it. 500 people in there may cut it to get you 100,000 GCI, but some of you have done that. You're going for 250, you're going for $500,000 in GCI and I'm so excited. Or if you're new, it's gonna be a struggle to get you to 50. So we're gonna walk you through how to get there. So in the top quadrant here, what I need you to fill out on this is exactly as these should be categorized in your wise agent CRM. Now, if you're still in market leader, it's okay. We'll get you transferred over, whether that's through a Google sync or whether that's going to be a complete unuploading uh, or up taking it out from an export from market leader into wise agent. Whatever that is, this is not a wise agent training per se tonight, but the top quadrant is all about who's in your CRM. Because if the people that are in your CRM are getting your messages. There should be a relationship being built. Um, we, I think eight or nine years ago, I came up with the C2 and C3 designations. Well, what is C1? You don't hear me talking about that very much because you hear me talking about contacts. Contacts is C1. 
C2 is contracts, which of course take you to C3, your closing paperwork at our office. So I need to figure out with you who's already in there and who isn't. So let's walk through this real quick. What are your contacts being grouped as? Well, number one, a big section of mine and hopefully of yours are gonna be VIPs. That is people, what is a VIP? That is people that are in your referral army. These are not past clients. These are not normally current clients. We've separated them out and I'm gonna explain why in a minute. But your VIPs are people that should be referring you business, that know a lot of people, that you treat great, that you invite to the special events, it is their own category because these are going to be the people that are driving your business as a new agent, as a newer agent, as an experienced agent right below that past clients, every single one of your past clients, whether you had a great transaction or not, needs to be in this CRM. And what we're finding is for a lot of you that have been here while I'm looking at a few names over here. Good evening, Nick Price. Good evening, Donna Crane. Some of my wonderful friends that have been around a long time and have raving fans as, as past clients. If you're like me, I'm not 100% sure all those people are really getting regular touches for me. We're going to talk about reviews in a minute, but I'm realizing as I'm starting to use a new tool that you're all going to get access to shortly um, to collect all my reviews in one place. I'm realizing some past clients that actually really liked me did not review me because I didn't either ask or I didn't follow up. And then when I went to follow up, in this new lead aggregating website that you guys are all gonna have access to, I realized that sometimes all they got was my newsletter. There was no holiday touch. There was no video. There was nothing to be extraordinary or even ordinary as, as a past client um, should be touched. So that's your next category. Your third category is buyers. Buyers, every single one of your buyers, whether they think they're gonna buy next week or next year, should be in Zenlist. So Zenlist, as all of you now know or should know, is the tool that I'm paying for for every single one of you to have access to, which gives your consumers five to seven percent more listings than is on Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com. It gets them off of those sites. It gives them a much better filter. I'll give you a quick example. I met a client for the first time yesterday, Sunday, out in the field. And they said, Nick, can you get us a list of open houses? Now, normally what would have happened? I would have said, yeah, I'll get that to you. Went on to the next client, no ability to do that for them. Or five minutes after I drove off and did that for them, they changed their criteria. How often does that happen to you guys? You have clients that they have no idea where they want to be. That's not their fault. They're new to this or they're exploring. Zenlist with a touch of a button. I had the husband and wife each send me their little request. I accepted the request. We linked their account so husband and wife can be browsing on the train, on the bus, Metro, hopefully not driving to work. But whatever the situation is, they're each having their own access. They can collaborate with each, with each other. And then there's so many powerful filters within Zenless that don't exist anywhere else. And one of them is open house. So they could pick up just the open houses. I could sit there and send and pick them, pick out for them the ones I wanted them to go to. I did that. I went on to my next client. I started getting text messages and emails from agents that said, Nick, your client stopped by the open house. They had some app. They seemed really you know, into it. Uh, let us know what we can do. And I thought that was a client that I probably wouldn't have been able to service so well if I didn't have Zenless. So every single one of your buyers needs to now have access to Zenless. And I want to know how many people do. If you already have the Zenless app, you can open it up right now because part of the year of receipts is I want to see when you tell me how many people are in there, I don't need to know their names. I just want to see the number. You can go right into your Zen list and I'm going to do this live with you guys. And I'm going to show up right, take it up to my screen, even though you're, you're looking at the big part. Um, if you go in there, it will say right up at the top, 74 active clients. So if you look at mine, 74 active clients, and it'll also for you, and if you want to share it with me, that's cool too. You'll be able to see who's actually looking at stuff. This blows home snap and everything else out of the water and I'm paying for it for you. So I want to know how many clients, buyers are in Zenlist. Now you can have sellers in Zenlist too, especially if they're going to turn around and buy. But the biggest thing is with these buyers, I want them separated out from your VIPs, from your past clients, from your sellers. We're going to talk about them in a second. 
because now with Wise Agent, you can be sending them a drip campaign by text. You can do video. You can do all the different stuff you want to do specifically to them. So your newsletters that were very generic before, even if you were customizing them, what if you really separated them out and had additional information and special drip campaigns for, for example, your buyers? So what I've been doing with my buyers is these 74 people, they're in their own category. They got a little text message from me saying, hey, I would love to show you some property this weekend. I have time this day. I have time this day. What works for you? Everybody got the same message. And a lot of people were like, well, not this weekend. Or, hey, I had a question about this property. That extra message. I got to tell you, I don't know if I would have had time to text 74 people individually. Through Wise Text, I did it. So that's buyers. I want to track those with you. Sellers, cloud CMA sellers. Notice I'm using the tool names that I'm recommending to you. I'm really going to push these on you this year. Cloud CMA, it's free through MRAD. But guess what? Cloud CMA also interacts directly with Wise Agent. It was a really big part of when I looked at a couple final uh, categories of CRM, that really pushed me over the edge of some of those interactions. Cloud CMA was one of them. I want to know how many people you are, you've said done cloud CMAs for that are in their own separate category. Think of all the things you could do for them. Remember, I'm going to get out of this spreadsheet or get out of this tracking device for one second, go into uh, not the greatness tracker. We did this, hold on, let me open this up here. We did this uh, last Monday. We did the seller drip campaign. What if you had every single person that seller drip campaign getting the EMS flyer video, getting the Zenlist app as a seller, AdWorks, Smart Sign, a personal video from you, testimonials, link to Virtuance if you're using that photography company that we recommend, Info Sparks, all these different things you can do as drip campaigns. If you don't have these people separated out into their own groups, it is going to be really tough for you to do that. So back in the spreadsheet here or in our slideshow, active listings. Your active listings should be treated differently than your cloud CMA sellers because guess what? They're actively on the market with you. Those would be the people that maybe you do the uh, weekly report to. If you are following what we're asking you to do in the core training, that is every Tuesday, they get a status update for you. So tomorrow, I've got a bunch of showings and feedbacks. I'm sending that on to them. How would you do that? You're going to separate them out in Wise Agent so it's easier to find them and do that, especially if you're going to do a mass group piece. So this is meant for you as a brand new agent to track things, but also as a really big top agent. I'm not sure if Steve Colano is on right now tonight, but Steve has literally hundreds of listings sometimes at a time um, across state lines. So he's doing massive amounts of business. This is meant for a true top agent. Some of the people using Wise Agent across the country are massive agents. They're in core, they're in some other big, big programs, and they just have numbers that even for our top agents look incredible. This is how they manage those listings. Farming campaign. I want to know how many people are in your farming campaign, whether that's an expired listing campaign, a geographic campaign. Is it to just sold? How many people are in that campaign? So that contact list, I need to know how many people are in that. And lastly, but not least, obviously not everyone's going to fit in those categories, will they? Anybody that's just general contact, maybe not a close associate, they're not going to be a VIP. A lot of people that are on LinkedIn, remember, I love LinkedIn as a tracking tool as well, because it tells you birthdays, it tells you job promotions, changes in jobs, moving, all of that kind of stuff. Some contact information you may not have on these people. Otherwise, you can export your entire LinkedIn database. So if you've got 1,000 people, 5,000 people, whoever, I'd love to know who are in your general sphere of influence. So all the people that aren't going to be in these other categories. Okay, so that's contacts. Let's go into commissions and closings. I want to also know buyers and sellers what you did last year. Now, if you're new, this doesn't apply to you. But if you're not new, I want you to go in right now. Well, maybe not right now. Maybe when we get done with this presentation here, I want you to go into the Exit Resource Center. And I want you to sign in as yourself. 
and I want you to see your report card from this past year. And the reason why I want you to, I want to figure out with you whether you were buyer focused or seller focused. So how you do that is you click on reports and then you click on the bottom report card. You're gonna go 2021. So for those of you that have been here a while, you can go back year after year and hopefully you've been growing the past two years because a lot of your friends in the office have. So my goal for you is to be a balanced broker. And what I mean by that is listings and buyers should be about the same. If you are listing heavy, that tells me you're probably a very experienced agent, but that also makes me question, are you doing enough to get buyers for those listings? Are you doing lead capture? Are you really promoting the listing? Or are you just so busy getting the listings and maintaining them that you're not working on the buy side of it? So I'm coaching some of our top agents on how to get more buyer leads out of that. And even if that ends up being a referral fee to another agent, maybe you're building your team. We're gonna talk about residuals in a second. I want you to at least get 0.25, 0.3% of that buyer credit in the associate report card. So that's something I like about the internal document versus the MLS. If I go in the MLS, guess what's gonna happen? I'm not gonna see the referrals that you sent out. So if you are a big agent, I'm gonna miss that if I'm going just off the MLS documents. I've got one question here. All right, I'm gonna look at that later. Um, all right. So that was a direct message to me. So I'll look at that one later. Um, so on the seller side, I had 33.25. You could see I'm doing some referrals. On the buyer side, 30. If you are buyer heavy, that indicates to me normally that you are mostly a, most often a newer agent. And the reason why that is, it's tougher to get listings. It's a more nervous conversation. You're not gonna have as many past clients, if any. So you're buyer heavy. I'm gonna turn to you and say, okay, what do we need to do to get more sellers? Is it a farming campaign? Is it expired? Is it just keeping in better touch with your past clients, setting them up on the monthly CRM uh, induced cloud CMA from Wise Agent? So see what you can do there. But that's those numbers. So buyer side, seller side, and then obviously your gross total income, your GCI for the year. Then Let's go back to our spreadsheet. So buyers, sellers, GCI, and residuals. Did you bring anybody into the company? I don't care if you're brand new. You should be introducing people to me and to the company. Right now tonight, I don't know anybody else that is having a nighttime training. I don't know anybody else that sent out a free app. I don't know anybody else that X, Y, Z. You really have a set of tools that keeps growing and growing. We are spending money in ways we have never spent before because we are excited to see the growth in each one of you. New copier coming to North Avenue, some cool stuff at the office, but mostly it is these type of tools. If you're not introducing people to exit, you are missing out on residuals. If you're a top agent, you or an agent that's kind of more in like, a, I don't wanna say a slowdown mode, but you're more, hey, I wanna mentor, I wanna grow other people's business. Maybe I don't wanna slip and fall on the ice Sunday morning like I did and uh, out showing houses. I wanna show other people how to do it and monetize that and get paid for. Well, this is the place to be. So I wanna know your 2021 residuals. And by the way, if it's a zero, that's okay. But I am gonna ask you if it was zero, why is it? Is it that you don't feel comfortable with the conversation? You need my help? So you can go in under these reports again, and you can figure out who your recruits are. So if you have not reached out to any of the people you've brought into the company, you should be helping them out. Check in with them. Even if you're new and kind of lost too, it's okay. Be lost together. Let's have a meeting. Let's sit down. Let's do a Zoom, whatever. But what I want you to see here, though, is if you go into the residual earnings report for 2021, you will see at the end of it, you know, you can make significant extra income. There are now, I believe, 12 of us that are, well, there were 21 people that capped this year that went over 100,000 GCI. And of them, I think there's now 11 of us that are over 100% commission. So we are basically paid to be here at this point. That's a pretty cool thing. But what I want to show you is, if you are not doing the basics to have those conversations, you're missing out on a lot of extra income. I can't see this report, by the way. This is not one. I know how much GCI you did because everybody at our office, that's knowledge that I have. 
I do not know how much you did in residuals. I would love to see that because there are some of you that as we do the math, we figure out together, oh my gosh, you're, you know, you are making money. It just goes into your account and you spend it as if it's a commission. I want you to consider separating that money out. And the reason why is we're going to go into the whole investing dialogue and that separate chart in a couple of minutes. So, you know, this year, this is real money, guys. Uh, my net from exit corporate and residuals was, you can see that number at the bottom there. That's well into the six figures. It has been for almost a decade. You know, I've been here a while. I talked to a lot of people. What if you even made six to 10% of that? What if you did 16,000? What would you do with $16,000 you didn't have this year? I've split sponsorships with other people. You can do the same. You can get all 10%. I do not care. Spread the word about exit, particularly our office, because we're doing some great stuff. So that's the, whoops, wrong, wrong example there. I'll show you that one in a second. Uh, let's go back to the slide so version so you can see it better. So that is the four numbers I want you to track from 2021. I need you to, if you're going to do this document with me, attach your 2022 business plan. If you don't yet have the 2022 business plan, don't worry. We're going to do that training again on Money Mondays. And I might even do an in-office version of it just to make sure, even though some of you would be behind in it because you've been here for a while and you just didn't get it done. It's okay. I can do this business planning with you at any point. But if you're going to do the work to get into this document, you really should have done or could need to do the business plan. I want to have that attached or sent with this document when you send it back to me. Now, let's go down to the bottom quadrant, collateral. What does collateral mean? Collateral is the marketing you're sending out. That is the number of items you're sending out to other people. Just solds. Did you do just sold cards last month? I want to know how many. And by the way, just sold cards to me, the only kind that is acceptable in that number, I don't use that word very often, but acceptable, that sounds like I'm your boss. I'm not, I'm your coach, but here's what. Why would you spend money on a postcard if it doesn't have any lead capture? You have to have not only a call to action, but lead capture. So those of you guys that are new, I'll tell you, because this is this, by the way, this Zoom is going to be public. So we're not going to give out the name of the vendor that we like here, but uh, we have a particular great relationship with one vendor after I've tested a dozen of them that really does a great job on the just sold cards. I want to know how many you did last month. I want to know how many. There's a zero there, but yet you did business last month. Why did you not send a just sold card? I also want to know the total number of wise texts sent. Those are the text messages, not from your cell phone, because those I can't, you know, that's going to be pretty hard for you to count. But the wise texts are the ones done through the CRM. I want to make sure you are using that tool. And that's a new category. I'm sure that a lot of us are going to be at a zero for another month or two. Get used to that tool. Make sure that everybody, as you're putting people into Wise Agent, that they have a cell phone number, that it's not listed as a home number, that it's the cell phone number. So then that way, as you're building up these categories in that individual category, you can say, hey, I've got access to Zenlist, or hey, here's an event we're doing in February. Here's a happy hour. Whatever we're doing, think of all the different stuff we did last year Barry's boot camp, yoga classes, charity food drives, charity coat drives. Um, all the different buyer and seller seminars. We had something every month. You need to be able to send that to people by text. Don't just rely on the newsletters, okay? People are not reading their emails like they used to. Farming mailers sent. That's not just sold cards. Farming mailers are those consistent campaigns that go on month after month. Again, I would strongly advise that that have a lead capture component to it. There's one vendor I know of that does that correctly. Uh, so I want to know the number of, of farming mailers you had last month. If you have zero and you don't care, that's okay. Put down zero. But I am going to ask you, why are you not prospecting your own neighborhood or a neighborhood or geographic farming area of choice? Core letter of the heart or EOS sent. Core letter of the heart, L-O-H or EOS, evidence of success sent. Direct mail pieces to your existing people. How often are you sending to your VIPs and to your past clients and the people you're currently hoping to build a relationship with? Why are you not sending that kind of stuff? It takes a little bit of time. Amanda, the graphic designer, can help you. Or you can send it right through Wise Agent, whatever's best for you. But send that stuff out. And I have all kinds of examples I can show you on that if you'd like a whole class on it. Last, not least, total number of reviews online. You can give me a breakdown. You can just give me all of them as a group. 
I'd like to know the total number of reviews you have. If you're new, obviously that number is going to be an egg for a bit, but we're going to work on it. If you're not new, why are you not getting great reviews from your past clients? Those build up and snowball over time. And they're also very powerful in getting you into some of the referral sources we've talked about in some of my past classes with you. So that is the collateral category. Last category, and then we're going to open it up for questions on this document. Communication. So this is the left quadrant. CMA, number of CMAs you did last month. Now, if I would be shocked if it's hard for you to count because if you're doing them all in Cloud CMA, you just go into Cloud CMA and click on the top and it's got all of them in a row in, in, in chronological order. Remind doesn't have that feature. Connect MLS doesn't have that feature. So do you see once again, in addition to all the other reasons why I like Cloud CMA, it makes it very easy for you to say, I did three CMAs, six CMAs, zero CMAs. Okay, cool, zero. Don't be afraid to have a bunch of eggs in this to start. If you lie, I can't help you. If you don't turn in the document at all, I can't help you. I can't go into your MLS and figure out how many CMAs you did, nor is it in my business. If you are not in the coaching, if you're in the coaching, I want to help you. You've got to get, dig out that number for us together. And if it's a zero, it's okay. But let's talk about why and what we can do to change that if that's important to you. Number of opens last month. If you are new and everything else is a zero, I better see three, four, 10, a bunch of open houses. People are walking into open houses. I saw it yesterday, not with the example I gave you before. I walked into an open house because I couldn't get there in time to see it with a client that wanted to see a property. Brand new on the market, I walked into this open house and it was a lot of people represented by realtors. There were realtors there and then there were people off the street. And of course it's in my neighborhood. So I'm like, do you need a realtor? But you need to host the open house to, to take the client. There are so many opportunities for you. And especially if you're smart about it, have a little QR code up of, hey, here's access to my Zenlist app. Here's a digital buyer's presentation. We're gonna talk about that in a second. All these different pieces of collateral, these are huge for you, but you can't sit there at home and hope that people meet you. You've got to go out and do stuff. And as a new agent, open houses are the way, along with expired campaigns, the way I built my business as a new agent in two different states. Because remember, I didn't, I'm not from here. I'm originally from Indiana, became a top agent doing all this stuff and turned around and decided I was hot. You know what? Came to Chicago, knew nobody, fell flat on my face and had to start all over again doing the same thing again. And some of you that are on, I'm looking over here and seeing some of you that are on here, you know, if there's Heather or Cheryl on here, there's people that are brand new in the last two years, brand new agents and hit 100,000 their first year. Derek Walbert, 100,000 his first year, doesn't even really, you know, come from a real estate background, any of these people. That's amazing. That is really, really amazing. So what do they do? FISBOs, expired, open houses, Events. Let's talk about events. I want to know how many events you either hosted or attended. Now, of course, it's COVID. And man, aren't we all sick of hearing that? It's COVID. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm sick of it. However, it is what it is. We can't control that. But what we can control is, did you at least attend an online meeting? I sat at an online meeting uh, with a Zoom with a neighbor, with the alderman. That was a mess. It was 100 people that could get in and people were, couldn't get in at once. So all of a sudden I see a neighbor, chatted them on the side because I had the, them in my farming campaign. Couple other things that I've done. Restaurants are still open. You can still do, I'm seeing some of you. I think Nick Price is still on here. He's doing a little fitness event of his own next weekend. You have all these different cool things. Um, who is it? Somebody else that I think is on here is doing a little coffee next weekend. Come, come by, I'll grab you a cup of coffee. Talk to me about your, your real estate goals for the year. Easy stuff to do. Did you attend an event of somebody else's? That could even be a birthday party. I don't care. Just get out there. I want to know how many events that you attended in the last month. And then last but not least, new contacts in the last 30 days. You should be able to tell me how many new people. And that doesn't mean I met someone that means you met someone, you got their first name, last name, cell phone number, and hopefully their email address, and you put it in your phone, which is then hopefully, if you've done everything right, which we're going to work on that if you're still lost in that, synced up to Google Contacts, which syncs up to your CRM. 
that will also, by the way, tell you a report of everybody that you've introduced to the CRM in the last 30 days. If you are not meeting new people, here's the facts we know. People are unfortunately passing away. They're retiring. They're moving to different areas. They have another realtor that's already their friend. Your database, if it isn't growing every month, is actually shrinking. People unsubscribe. People just, the world happens. And so I want to see how many new people you've met in the last 30 days. If that's a zero, let's work on what's above that. Let's work on what's below that in collateral. Let's figure out where we can meet more new people, which goes right back to your business plan. Okay. Any questions on this document before we go to the investor document? I see no one's dropped off, so I haven't overwhelmed you yet. Good. All right. You can, by the way, this is an ongoing conversation. So don't think that, you know, you can't ask any questions later that as you work with me, say, hey, this category doesn't work for me or I want to add one. These documents are all editable. Let's go to the next one though. This is the, there's only two. So don't worry, you're halfway through, probably over halfway through the class. The investor one. So this one, I kind of stole the idea from someone else, but then I put it into, I think, a more visually appealing document. So when you are working with anyone, whether it is yourself, because remember, you're all in the investors club. We were talking about that a little bit earlier today online. And that whether it's your investing goals, whether it's a first time buyer, whether it's a seasoned investor, everybody has investing goals or should. I want you to start using this document because just like the last document laid out to me as your coach, what you're trying to do and where you need to go with it. And it makes you think, and then it lets me see this document will let your client fill it out, makes them think and let you see where they need to go. These are roadmaps, guys. These are both roadmaps. So here's the roadmap for investing. Well, thank you. I'm enjoying the Monday night. I'm loving these things. These are so much fun because I get to wear a hat. I'm at my house. Um, and, and I think the attendance <laughs> keeps growing on these. We had almost three dozen at the last one. I realize this is not a great time for everyone, but for a lot of you, this is the best time. So we'll keep, keep doing them. I'm open to these. I'm going to keep recording them. And some of them, like this one, we're going to make public, even though we are not sharing the templates. you got to be at Exit Strategy to get this template for yourself. If you notice, it does say at the top, trademark, and at the bottom, my name. So these are for you Exit Strategy agents to share with your clients. Let's break down the investing goals. Criteria. I want to know, and if you've ever heard me talk about the business plan, I want to know the who, what, when, where, why, how. The criteria, I want to know what they need. What do they think they need? So by the way, this one is my actual investing goal. So this is very kind of like personal, but um, you guys all know that I want to buy an office building or a mixed use building on the north side. It's driving me nuts that even though I own my home and I own investment properties, that we rent that office space on North Avenue. It kills me. So I don't want that anymore. I want to buy one. What do I need to do? My criteria, I laid it out. So if you have something that matches this, let me know. Maybe we can do a deal. So the location, the type, the needs, and the desires. Then on the right-hand side, every single one of your clients, whether they're cash buyers or whether they're not, and most of us, including myself, are going to be financed. You need to worry about not just credit. Credit's at the bottom here. It's in the bottom quadrant. Everybody knows they got to clean up their credit. But guess what? It's also about cash flow. This is where you as a realtor often go wrong. What do we do? We make a good amount of money. And then we turn around and we put all our expenses into our CPA. And we go, there it is. I made $100,000 minus $40,000. And God knows what. That means I only made 60. Yay, that's all I owe the IRS. And then guess what happens, guys? You turn around and when you go to as a 1099 independent contractor, you go to your lender and the lender goes, that's cute. You made 60 grand. You can't afford what you want. So you have to start thinking ahead. That's why these sometimes are two and three year plans. So for example, notice I didn't say 2019 taxes. Well, those weren't, I had a lot of interesting things that went on. I spent a lot of money. There was, there was a loss in some categories. That's not going to look good to a lender. So 2020 was much better. 2021 was awesome. Guess what? I need to make sure that I'm not too heavy with my expenses. 
If you are newer and you need to make more money, go back to the other document, but you've got to figure out how to file your taxes in a way that's gonna reflect positive earnings potential and earnings power. So that is that cash flow quadrant right there. So I've got 10, uh, 2021 taxes. I've got to keep my 1099 income up. If you are someone that's going to do a traditional, if you're looking at a couple of you that are part-time with us, we love our part-timers. I was part-time for years. If you're W-2 at your primary job and you need to keep that primary job in order to get the investment property or primary residence of your dreams, guess what? You got to put that down there. So for those of us that are corporations, little corporations, that may mean the K-1 that K-1 form, you're actually probably like me glazing over because those are counting terms, but that's also going to be what the lender looks for. So this is a lender conversation, but you also need to figure out what do you need to do? Do you need to make more money? Do you need to keep expenses down? What in the cash flow quadrant do you need to do? Let's drop down to the credit quadrant. Now, if you had asked me this 10 years ago when the market was awful, and uh, my friend Rob is on here that is, is getting his licensing done right now. Rob's known me for 15, 17 years. I mean, he's known me when I had no money, lots of money, no money again. So, you know, debt, credit, all that, it's always a private topic. So you may have a client, or even for yourself, maybe you don't want to put all of it in a document that's going to go public, but that doesn't mean this document has to go public. This can be just for you or your family. This is really a good thing to stick on the wall so you guys can't see, but if you've ever been over to my house, you know I've got the whiteboard wall and the bulletin board built into the wall because I'm weird like that. And this document is actually stuck on the wall where I can sit there and go, okay, I got to keep my debt under a certain percentage. Remember revolving debt? If you've ever been to any of our credit repair or credit seminars, big deal. So I keep mine super low, but I don't pay everything off and close the account. That's a trick. You keep it under a certain amount, 20% is ideal. I'm super anal about it. So I keep it under 5%, which is keeps my score way, way up. Um, there's a temptation for a couple. I'm looking again at the list of people. I think a couple of us on here have over the years, either we've owned our house a long time or you know, kind of bought at a certain budget and now we're doing a lot better. We bought at the bottom of the market and we paid our house off or paid way down. Be very careful before you pull money out of that because that maybe look like a piggy bank to you that actually is a asset that will look very good to a lender if you're doing more like a business loan. So I'm trying to keep my house, or I am keeping my house paid off. It's my primary residence, keeping all my trade lines open. Don't close down a credit card. I already mentioned that, but I'm gonna say it again. If you're looking to buy, don't close down a credit card. Now this is obvious information to some of us, but for a lot of people, they're so focused on paying down debt, the impulse is to shut the credit cards off. That's a bad thing, okay? So you wanna to talk to your lender. I'm not telling you what to do for you. I'm telling you what my lender told me to do. So talk to your lender on that. My last one for me, at least, a lot of us are working about the, re working and looking into the rehab loans. That's, we're working in that general direction because we're seeing some of the inventory isn't what we want, but yet what if you could at these super low interest rates also get the rehab put into that. So whether it's buy and hold, fix and flip, private money lender. Um, those of you guys that watch our TV show, Selling Chicago, we are for the first time ever going to have a private money lender on. I'm so excited to talk to you about private money loans. The that's you know They get a little bit of a bad uh, reputation, the hard money lenders. We're going to even talk about those. So, But Hunting to Bank has a great program, 15% down investor loan, rehab loans. It's an awesome one. That's the one that I'm gunning for at this point, depending on how big the building is. So that's on, on me. That's what I'm looking at in the credit department. Who are going to be your lenders? Who are going to be your assets to you? That's going to be in that category. On the left-hand side is capital. You got to have money to close. You got to have money to fix the place or keep it up. Reserves, for those of us that have been around a while, you know that there's got to be reserves in your accounts. Where is it? Sometimes I've, I've worked with clients that they have money, little bits everywhere. And until they put it down on paper, they're, oh God, I got a retirement account. I can pull money out of there. You know what? I forgot about that income property that maybe I want to sell that I own, you know, all of it or whatever the situation is. 
So with mine, I have a little bit of crypto. Don't go too far with that. Although remember, we do have the crypto seminar Thursday morning. I got us into, um, it's not from our local association. It's from one way down state, but it's a really good speaker. So if you're interested in crypto, do that little uh, seminar on Thursday. I don't have a lot. I try to keep it under 1% of my total nut. Um, you may have a savings account you forgot about, a CD, something like that. Maybe it's a gift money from somebody else. Where is all that? Um, and then I've obviously got to increase my savings if I'm really going to buy up here this $2 million alleged top price point and it's 25% down like a lot of the commercial loans. That doesn't, my numbers on the left don't add up to where I need to be, do they? No. So if I want a super nice building, I'm going to have to save more money, which goes back over to the right hand side. Keep that money up, keep the expenses down. This is a very valuable tool for somebody that is just kind of all over the map with you or that you feel like they have a lot of issues. I use a version of this. Again, this is not, this is my document, but there was like a four page worksheet that somebody gave me in a $3,000 class that I paid for. It was the only thing I got out of the class that was good. And I'm like, I'm squirreling this away into this, actually this little desk drawer down here of ideas. And I had it in there forever. And I'm sitting there looking at, I'm going, it's four pages. It's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And I really needed, just was at the bottom, was my, the action items in each category. I'm like, wait a second, I have four categories. This is great. So these both will be in the private coaching blog. Both of these documents, you can edit them as you wish. Uh, I'm happy to go over if you want to create some additional accountability. Maybe this is something that you do with a family member, maybe with me as your coach. As you guys know, I'm very transparent. I've made a lot of money in this business and I've lost a lot of money in this business. And I've had some years that really sucked. So this type of tracking of your activity, of what you're doing, of who you know, of who you, where you, of who you know where you wanna go, this is the kind of stuff that if you don't do this with me, I can't help you, okay? I can sit there all day and tell you that you're great and show you the same tools over and over again. If we don't start implementing them and have a roadmap, we're not gonna go anywhere. And one of the last things I'll tell you tonight is with all the money that a lot of us have made in the last couple of years and where some of you are projected to go, if you don't buy real estate, if you don't start saving for retirement, all the busting of your butt that you're doing right now means nothing. And one of the worst things this business real estate does to you is it teaches you, well, some offices teach you at least how to make money. Very few teach you how to save it and build towards retirement and towards a cash flow and multiple income streams that are going to actually allow you to live a better life. I don't want you guys to sit here and drop dead at your desks or me either. So this is the type of stuff that long-term really excites me. Uh, it's why I came to exit was the residual income component. But if you blow your residuals on stupid stuff, like I did the first seven or eight years I was here at exit, it's actually just as pointless as not getting the residual bonuses at all. So let's be intentional. Let's work together. Does anyone have anything they want to share, ask questions about regarding either one of these documents tonight before I let you go and upload this to YouTube? You guys have just been super quiet and quiet. pleasant. And um, it's, was that somebody else or was that just feedback on my own voice? Mr. Price, you're unmuted. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Did you want to say something or is that just a hello? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, um, I was just wanted to uh, piggyback off what you're saying as far as the investment piece, uh, you know, plan planning for the future of retirement, um, investing in real estate. Uh, I know we talked earlier today about the Investors Club. And, you know, anybody that's on here, just guys, want to give you guys encouragement to jump into it. Um, I'm hoping I can add something to it. Um, I was talking about with Nick is that, you know, um, those of us that don't make a lot of money and those of us who do make a lot of money, you know, if it's feasible that we can put something together where we're able to um, pull resources together and invest in real estate, you know, um, through syndication, through uh, partnerships and LLCs and so forth, we can bring in the specialist to tell us how to set that up. Uh, wouldn't it be awesome if we able to, because you guys come across a lot of deals, you know what I'm saying? And then you take those deals and you give it to your investors. What if you're able to put that deal together and bring it to the group 
and we were able to pull it together and put an exit sign out there in front of it. Exactly. Nick, exactly. And so, you know, one of the things that we do, I think, is we show a lot of opportunities to our clients, but we don't either we see them and say, man, I wish I had enough money for that. You know, there's the opportunity sometimes, you know, if each one of us that had a good year said, okay, I'll put 10,000 in towards this. Um, that little investing group that I'm a part of um, outside of real estate, that's exactly what they do. They syndicate our money together. They form an LLC. They buy into some of these pre-market, off-market stock things. And it's a really cool opportunity that you wouldn't get individually. So we can collaborate as a group. And, you know, sometimes it's just the knowledge. Sometimes it is truly just in the knowledge. Um, the, Laura asked, where can we get the documents from our trainings? Just go to teamlibrary.com and click on files. Um, these two new ones will be on there this evening in addition to all the other ones that are already there. And then Carmen, that group is for everybody. Exit strategy, the investors group is open to everyone. It is, so that was originally Emmy's idea. Emmy Connolly, uh, Suman Saha has been heading it up uh, and did some great education last year. Nick has volunteered to uh, continue to work with the group and bring some opportunities to it. It's uh, everybody's in it because remember, if you're at a company that's not giving you anything to help the company grow and you want to move over to exit, you have the opportunity to get residuals. But I think it goes beyond that. It's about a mastermind of whether you getting a bunch of residuals, whether you had a great year in the commission side, or whether you just have no idea where to begin. You know, if there was an investors club that was completely open when I got in this business, I needed credit repair. I needed to find out better contractors. I need to know the process. People are dropping 30 plus thousand dollars to go through some of these investors programs, which, you know, God love them. At least it's in information. This is free and this is for every single one of you. So please take us up on the opportunity, um, you know, reach out to Nick, reach out to myself, just stay engaged because if we can make more money, and we can save more money, we can mastermind about the rest of it. And I can bring in all different types of people. You tell me what you need. So if you want to, just let me and Nick Price know, you know, hey, I wanna hear about this, whether it's hard money lenders, whether it's I need a CPA, whatever it is that you need. And a lot for a lot of you that are newer, it will be, and Laquita, you're in, everybody's in. So you're, it's not a matter of getting in, it's a matter of just staying engaged. <laughs> I promise you, you're all in. All right, guys, thank you very much for being here. Have a good night. This is being recorded.